Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad turns a grand 93 years old today. Born in Alostar, Kedah in 1925, Tun Dr. Mahathir has come a long way from being a medical doctor to being the fourth and seventh Prime Minister of the country. His wife, Tun Dr. Siti Hasma, who turns 92 on July 12, is also a trained medical doctor. Today, the couple help keep the pulse of the nation beating in their own special way. But the one man who made sure Tun Dr. Mahathir's heart is kept pumping is Tan Sri Dr. Yahya Awang. Tan Sri Dr. Yahya is one of the foremost cardio surgeon in the country. He's also the founder of the National Heart Institute, IJN, and the Cardiovascular Central Kuala Lumpur, or CVSKL. Tan Sri Dr. Yahya performed two coronary artery bypasses on Don Dr. Mahathir in 1989 and 2007. Well, the last time I met Don was perhaps socially, uh, last year sometime. Mm -hmm. uh, he, we met at a function. I, actually, it was probably Don Siti Asma's birthday in his son's house, and uh, I was one of the guests, and I was so happy to see him so well. Well, I feel proud that uh, one of my patients is elected into office at the age of 93 and is still doing very well health-wise. And uh, I, I wish him well in the future. And he certainly takes really good care of himself. I mean, as his doctor, no. Well, one of the one of the main factors in terms of uh, in terms of uh, long-term good results is management of risk factors and I think he manages risk factors very well. He exercises, he uh, takes care of his diet and I think he has uh, a wonderful wife who looks after him. Uh, Tun Asma, I think this is the person, the doctor in the house. The first operation was in 89. Uh, I was surprised that Tun chose our team to be the team uh, doing the operation. Who, uh, the, that uh, should do the operation. Of course, uh, we were young, we were a young group of doctors. There were, we had about five years' experience. I knew that we can uh, do it if given a chance. And uh, it was an honor for us when Tun selected us. He was the Prime Minister then. I think he could have, uh, he could have chosen to travel to any part of the world for this operation, but he, we feel rightly so, chose us, and I gathered the best team in the country then. And uh, I knew that the operation would be a success if we uh, keep our minds and head to it. Uh, it's only natural that I feel nervous, but uh, once uh, the operation starts, uh, that fear factor is no longer there. I just concentrate and did my best. So you and your team of friends, colleagues, will probably be, uh, what I would say, had actually seen Tun's heart. The rare, very rare people who had... Yeah, I've seen Tun's heart. I, I have held it in my own hands. And uh, it's a good heart. It's a good heart. I wish that he will continue to have good health. Uh, he's, a, he's a disciplinarian, a very disciplined man who uh, takes instruction from the doctors very well. He looks after his diet. Well, he follows instruction. He follows uh, whatever the doctors want him to do. He is one of our model patients, in fact. And, uh, he likes challenges. And every time we tell him to do something, he will do it to the best of his ability, I'm sure. Well, I think hard work does not kill. Hard work really uh, is, is a necessary as you age, it's important that you don't retire completely. And uh, Tun is a good example of all this. In conjunction with Tun Dr. Mahathir's birthday today, Tan Sri Dr. Yahya called on the couple at their home in Sri Kembangan.
Astro Awani captured the auspicious moment as three great doctors came together in the house. President Ramos came here. Because I heard, I heard. He went to your kitchen and had coffee. You're not the one who, who, who came here and hit the ball into my home. No, I didn't. I I didn't. I'm not a good golfer, but that, that ball wasn't mine. <laughs> Don't say hi to me. met and reminisced old times, they emphasized the need to keep good health. You began in the old hospital, no? Huh? We began in GH. GH, yeah, yeah that was where I was uh, you operated upon. Operated that was in 89, sir. Yeah. And as usual, doctors, when they find that you are flat on your back and unable to do anything, they began to tell about the problems. Yes. And one of the problems was, of course, uh, they don't have a proper place for heart surgery. Th that's, that's how IGN came up to Yeah. Yeah. We were short of, of facilities. We had, Masa Kat GH dulu, kita had four or five beds only. Yeah. That was to cater for the whole need of the country. Yeah. So there was not enough facilities. And uh, when Tun asked me, what, I said, we should have a heart hospital. And I think IGN has done well. And foreign people are coming to be trained there. Every year that I, when I was there, we had a Japanese that come. Mm. Training. Training, yeah. uh, They come for a year. Because in Japan, the training is a bit prolonged. And they don't get the experience mm. as much as our trainees do here. Mm. Is that because the Japanese have less uh, uh, heart disease? Not really. Uh, it's just that their system of training, for them to become a professor or to become a consultant, takes years. Mm. But I must say, you look well. Don't oh, you know, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> because thank of you. you. <laughs> Twice. I, I was in Singapore and they told me, if you compare Tun Mahathir and Lee Kuan Yew, they're all, about, they're all very disciplined people, very hardworking, very uh, follow the instruction of the doctors. But I did say the only difference is that Tun Mahathir has got Tun Siti Hasma, a doctor in the heart. <laughs> good, good, good. Is that true? <laughs> he was very, she was very strict. I didn't know what she was doing when I was in hospital, <laughs> stopping but people from coming to see me. Yeah, right. I, I, I was with the guard at the door. Yeah, you were the gatekeeper. Not but the hospital wanted me to stay. Because yeah. they, they, they said that that's my, my role. It's, it's easier yes. for you to refuse yes. people to come in rather than yes, the hospital. Yes. They always ask me, Tun, what's the secret of your well-being? <laughs> I say, well, it's largely genetic. And also because Tun is a highly disciplined person. He listens to uh, the doctors, he takes his medication, exercise regularly. So now they say, I cannot retire until I'm 95. I say, God. I'm not told. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get asked that question everywhere I go. Really? Even in Japan, in uh, other countries also. Mm -hmm. Invariably, somebody will come up with that question. How do you maintain your health? At 93, you're still functioning. Uh, I, frankly, I don't know. But I think it is partly genetic also. Sure, I think so. But if you are spared from diseases like cancer, yeah. uh, then I think you can have a reasonable chance of having a, a good, uh, healthy life. True. But if you get one of these debilitating diseases, then of course uh, nothing you do for yourself will really preserve you. Of course. But See, I, say, I also say to that uh, we doctors in the medical fraternity would like to think that we did contribute a little bit. Yeah, not a little life. bit, a lot, a lot. Before there were heart surgery, I think I wouldn't last. I wouldn't last. I would have gone down with the first heart attack. Yeah. But the ability to uh, do this um, 
had the operation, open up the chest. Before you open up the chest, you die. That's right. Because the lung will <laughs> collapse. <laughs> yes, but uh, now, very complicated operation, lasting hours, yes. can be carried out because yeah. you have the heart-lung machine. That's right. Yeah. I think this is a great invention. Okay. After heart surgery, I think you can be almost normal. Almost, yes. see, Otherwise, if you climb stairs and all that, you get dizzy. Of course. Be but uh, I, until now, I can climb stairs. Uh, in my office, there are 28 steps to go I up. I, I go know. up that, come down, then go up again, then come I down. And, uh, I make it a habit not to use lifts if I can help it. That's so good. in the house, we have installed lift, but I don't often use the lift. I prefer to climb the stairs yeah. up and down. I was impressed on when uh, Lee Sian Lung visited you recently. I noticed you walk up the stairs of the Padana Foundation. Yeah. As a 93 year old, I, I'm very proud of, <laughs> of him. Yeah. And you didn't seem very breathless. You, know, you were not breathless oh, at all. Uh, yeah. But after the second operation, the first time I tried climbing the stairs, I was very dizzy. Tired, eh? Yeah. This thing, I couldn't breathe. Mm. Couldn't breathe. And uh, I took a long time before I can climb the stairs properly. But I use that as a test sure. to see whether my health is okay or not. Mm. If I can climb the stairs, it means that I'm okay. Good. And see, I, I do a lot of testing myself what I can do, what I cannot do, whether I'm going downhill or not. One of the things I had always tell people is uh, not to eat too much. Uh, this actually, it was my mother who told me really? that uh, when you find the food is very nice, stop eating. Oh. And I couldn't understand why she told, until I went to study medicine. Then I realized when the food is too nice, you tend to overeat. Right. When you overeat, the stomach expands. Yes. And later on, you have to eat more in order to assuage your hunger. True. And then when the food is nice again, you overeat again and becomes bigger. Yes. And the result is you become obese, fat. Yes. And then, of course, you have all the other complications like uh, a strain on the heart, for example. I, I just, when I see fat people, I just, uh, just can't understand <laughs> it. I say, why don't you reduce your weight? Yeah. Because it all comes from overeating. That's true. If you don't overeat, you cannot be fat. In my trousers, uh, which were made 35 years ago, I can still wear. <laughs> <laughs> we came here, Ton, uh, with a few doctors to celebrate your 93rd birthday and to wish oh. you all the very best. Oh. And to Ton City as well. I heard it's but your I'm birthday. But I'm still coming. 92. But you'll be 93 soon. Yeah, but I'm not 23. I'm 92. <laughs> I was a victim of my own ruling uh, leadership by example. Yes. Now, if I had a heart attack and I had to go elsewhere for, for my operation, I think I will not be actually practicing leadership by example. So I have to show the example. I know the risk that I ran, but I thought, well, if you don't survive, you don't survive. But yeah, if you don't try, you don't know. Sure. Mm, but uh, it was a very uh, spiritual process, actually, of convincing yourself that it can be done. It was after that that I coined the word uh, yes. that we can do. We can do whatever. Well, it was an honor for us doctors that you chose us to be the surgeons, the group of surgeons to do the surgery. You still and remember the day? I still remember the day. In fact, the American cardiologist mm. shook my hand in the morning of the surgery mm. and told me, Yaya, if you need medical asylum, you can come to America. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. Yeah. But I gathered a very good team. I think we had a very good team very of doctors. Good, very good. Uh, good. All we needed to do was to follow the protocol. Mm. And they asked me whether I was nervous. Of course. It's only natural. It's, I'm, I'm a human. We obviously we were natural to be operating on the prime minister. Yes. How long did it take? 
take about five hours, a bit more. A bit more. Yeah. Then from the time? The time Tony came into OT, he was anesthetized. Yes. Then we opened the chest and we put the <coughs> patient on my mask. Don't, I don't know whether I told you. No. Because uh, he was already, he has his pre medication. Pre medication. And he was already asleep. And it's just on the ear, about 10 o'clock at night. Oh, before the surgery, this one? Before the surgery. Ah. Pre uh, the one, one day before. I got a call at 10, about 10 o'clock in the night from Singapore. Mm. People are very concerned. Sure. Very and, and concerned was condition and who was going to do the surgery. And uh, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew rang me up. 10 o'clock. I wanted to speak to him. Uh -huh. okay, so I said, sorry, Mr. Lee, he's already had, he had his uh, sedation. And he's asleep. Oh, he said, when is the operation? Tom I said, tomorrow. Oh, he said, he was very surprised. It can't be postponed. I didn't tell you this then. Can't it be postponed? He said, no, because he's got his pre-medication. He's going to do it. Who's doing it? He said, yeah, yeah. He said, he has got ready. Victor he's Chang, one eh? of those people who are very concerned. Yes, yeah, sure. Good intention. Mm -hmm. He's got ready, Mr. Vincent. Victor. Victor, Victor Cheng. Victor, Victor Cheng. Victor, not Mr. From Sydney, Victor. yes. Yeah. Yes. He's, he's going to fly to Singapore and with his cardiac team in from Singapore to come and do him. And that's it. That's it. He's going to do it. And uh, how many cardiac cases have done here? At that time, he wasn't a no. Yes. yes. No. Yeah, yes, yes. yes. How, I was how many cases? <laughs> I said, well, he's. Uh, Mahadeva stood on him. He took it. So I just want to cut short his uh, sure. conversation. He said, uh, Mr. Lee, uh, thank you very much for your concern. Can I ring you up tomorrow morning after the surgery? Oh, yes, please do. So modern technology has, has come a long way in heart surgery. To cap it all, Astro Awani decided to surprise Tone Dr. Made and Tone Dr. Siti Hasma with their young fans as Athena, Suhaila and Muhammad Arash presented a cake to our beloved Prime Minister. Happy birthday, Tone. We love you. Happy birthday.